the life of the saint Saint Seraphim of Sarov. In the symbol of our faith, uh, there is a small line that is written in one of the uh, one of the apostolic church. The Orthodox Church is really one and Catholic for all the people. It wishes for all the people in, in the, the divine liturgy. It doesn't say that we use this in our, or we use this expression only in our nation, but for the whole world and the whole saints. One of those saints was Saint Seraphim of Sarov who was from Russia, one of the last people, the last persons who became a saint through the divine grace of our God. He was born in 1759 and he uh, slept, died in 1833. He was at the same time that uh, our own saint, Saint Nicodemus from, uh, from Mount Athens, was living in uh, in earth. They have the same faith, and we read uh, his uh, his life, and we see that this is our own man, our own uh, saint, the, the the person of joy, who gave love and uh, affection through uh, to all people, and we say that. This, this saint, even if uh, he was from Russia, is our own saint too. We can describe this person saying that he was a very joyful person. He had gained the, the, uh, the, the Holy Spirit's uh, divine grace with a lot of um, help, with a lot of uh, um, exercise to himself. And he had gained the divine grace of the Holy Spirit. And his soul was full of uh, uh, joy and peace. And when he was, uh, when, and when the people saw him, they say that he was very joyful. He was uh, welcoming all his visitors with one and only, uh, one and only um, greeting. He was saying to them, um, God resurrected my joy. Um, in the Russian uh, language, is, it is um, Jesus Christos was cross. That the God was resurrected. And that was his favorite greeting. He, was, he didn't want anyone to see him uh, through, joy, uh, through uh, sorrow because he said that People do not have uh, do not have the the obligation to see him through through sorrow. So he had to be always very joyful. He was uh, uh, feeling sorrow and pain for the uh, the grief and um, and the sins of all the people, and he was trying to give them some of the love and affection and joy that he had inside him. He was really um, very joyful for this presence of the God, the love and the joy, and he was saying that he had inner, inner, inner peace and love. He gained this inner peace of his uh, uh, soul, and uh, as the Father say, if he gained this, love and peace of your own soul, then all the people around you will be joyful too and will have the peace within, within them. He was very humble, he was very simple, he was very, uh, he didn't have any bad uh, feelings inside him, he was innocent like a small child in, uh, in the point that all the, the wild animals throughout uh, the nature uh, were, were coming to him and they were bowing to him and doing whatever he wanted. We know a lot uh, uh, of uh, a lot of other examples from other saints that were served by uh, wild animals or they were um, 
uh, were their company of, all, of wild animals. Uh, there is, was a nun uh, that uh, she uh, used to say a story. When Seraphim, when Saint Seraphim was uh, in the desert, uh, there was uh, she had a very big problem, so she went to him to help her. She found him there sitting, sitting with uh, with a bear, and he was feeding the bear in the mouth like she was little little puppy. The nun was very very. Uh, uh, scared, he didn't want to come near. But the saint, saying that the nun uh, was trembling from uh, from fear, he explained to her that the, the bear was just a little a little child that just was a little a little lump. She didn't want to give any pain or to do something wrong, and and called the nun and said, "Come here, my child, and feed." Feed the bear by yourself. The nun was very uh, reluctant at the beginning, but uh, once she came near, she did it as the, the saint said, and she felt such a great joy. Uh, we only have to say that Saint Seraphim was a very, very joyful person, very calm uh, person. We can only have to watch at his icon and we will see that he was surely a peaceful man because he had he had gained the holy spirit inside him his face was uh, joyful and he was shining out of goodness and holiness and uh, peacefulness that he had and uh, with the one hand he was um, blessing everybody, and in the icon you can see that too. That he is blessing everybody. So we um, can justly say that he was just a very peaceful star, a very sinful, sinful, uh, sinful star, very uh, shining star, and with uh, uh, Saint Theodosius of Petrarch. And Saint Sergius of Randonnes, we say that they are the big saints of the Russian um, spirituality, uh, along with um, along with other saints who are very very shining stars of the Russian spirituality. Now we will begin with. Uh, the years of the life, the first years of the life of Saint Seraphim of Sarf. He was born in 1759 in the uh, town of Kursk of, in Russia, and his name was Prokhoros Motonin. He was the third child of the family, after one, of, uh, one brother and one sister. His, uh, his parents were uh, simple, uh, and uh, they fear and loved God. His father was uh, um, making uh, uh, making uh, wooden things. He was uh, uh, making church, uh, and uh, uh, his mother was also helping. Uh, when Prochorus was three years old, his father died. His mother, so beginning, continued to work for the church. And um, the church was half made, and he ha she had to finish the church and the, and, uh, the work that uh, her husband had done, and she, and so that he would she would have uh, money to uh, for the her orphans. Little Prochoros uh, was with her, so that she could have uh, an eye a knife of for him, because she he was very young. He was about seven years old and he was playing as little children do and he fell off uh, the bell of the church and uh, he fell onto the ground but nothing at all happened to him. Blood, just like an invisible hand took him 
and gra uh, grab him and just put him on the ground without hurting. Uh, one man who was passing by saw this uh, scene and uh, he was um, he was uh, he was blessed with uh, a special a special divine grace and he went to the mother's child and she said to her that God made a miracle on him because her child was about to become the servant of the Lord. Prochorus uh, grew up and went to school and suddenly one day he uh, went sick, very sick. His uh, grief was uh, great, great. He was loving, he loved a lot of uh, the school and the, the lessons and he, wa uh, he was very sad because he couldn't go to school and he was losing his lessons. But um, from, uh, from, the other, uh, from the other side, we cannot say, what can a little child about 10 years old and a sick child could do hanged, uh, could do inside the house without having anything to do or going anywhere because he was very uh, sick. One night his mother sent, uh, heard him speak by himself and she thought that uh, he was delirious because he was very sick and he had a great uh, fever. She asked him in the morning and uh, she was astonished at what she heard. Prochor said that his, the mother of, of God, Panagia, visited him and she assured him that she would become well again and that um, he, he, didn't, he didn't have anything to worry about because Mother of God was with him. So it happened. After a few days, his mother learned that um, there would be a celebration from, for, uh, for a very miraculous icon of uh, Theodokos uh, Maria's Mother of God. And she took her child and, and uh, she took her child and they, and uh, went to uh, went to uh, see the, that icon. And then the the, uh, the miracle became again. The other day, Prochorus was very well and n nothing was wrong with his life. He was he wasn't sick anymore. He felt that then Prochorus felt that he found his way in life and the love that he had for Panagia, Mother of God, which, which he thought that he was his protector, became very big. He began to love Mother of God very, very much. Every day after school he went to the church and he was studying um, the Gospel and the Holy Scriptures. One day he met that man that uh, he saw that he saw him falling off the bells, and um, he had a very big, very very big friendship between them, and they understand that they had uh, the divine grace of seeing the future and visions uh, in front of them. They were discussing for them uh, about them uh, with them, but. Uh, um, they feared, they feared that the other people would make fun of them, so they didn't say anything to anyone else. They only said their visions uh, one to the other. One of the day, uh, the, well, one of those days, and as it is today, people uh, think that whatever is different is stupid. And uh, when the people say that. Uh, they they see visions. People, uh, all the others are making fun of them. And uh, even though if uh, if the people are have good hearted, and uh, the other the the foreign people say that they are stupid. Prochorus was reading other books and except uh, the holy the holy books about the saints. He also liked the life of the people who were living. In the desert, uh, of course, there wasn't any desert in his country. But in Egypt and Palestine, he there were big, big forests. Wouldn't have 
any people uh, who would no people would live there and uh, the only people the only the only animals that living there were just bears and um, uh, other wild animals as foxes and uh, other animals the russians the russian pilgrims the Russians people who lived in the desert made their cabins there and lived uh, uh, beside god near god and uh, after that after a long while they build monasteries there the cold uh, uh, the cold winter nights uh, they used to say a lot of other stories the children of uh, his neighborhood and that what Prokhoros used to do also and he uh, read the gospel and explain it to the other people of the neighborhood and the children of that neighborhood his thought was always always to become a monk or to become a, a become a person that would live in the desert one of uh, some of the days after he went to visit the monasteries of Kiev as the first step to do towards this direction he decided to go to Kiev uh, the that is the town that has the most churches and the most uh, the most monasteries uh, in the world so Prokhoros went to there uh, to pay to pay his homage he went his day he passed his day talking with the monks about their lives and talking to them about his secret secret love to become a monk himself and go to the desert and he was telling them that to the monks everybody said to him that he should go to the monastery of Sarov that was near him near uh, the, the, in the vicinity of the Kursk when 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 uh, he went back to his home he talked to his mother about his decision she accepted that decision she put the cross on him and she gave uh, gave him his her blessing and she always she all um she almost gave she always gave him a big uh, bronze uh, cross that he had as a family as a family um, divine uh, divine holy holy peace and let him go with her blessing she didn't say anything she didn't put any uh, problems to him and let him go where he wanted now in the monastery the monastery of Sarov uh, is built on a hill and in in the beginning of the hill there were two rivers the old castle that were um, taken by the Tatars uh, when the Russians invaded on Russia and Russia uh, later on the Russians le let them go let send them away from their uh, from their areas and the castle was um, given was abandoned and nobody was living there the forest became bigger the trees became bigger and in that areas uh, there were only uh, jackals uh, bears and wolves for 300 years nobody was living there uh, about 1700 uh, there was a person a monk who was called john went to that area later on uh, other people came uh, came with uh, him and other monks uh, came to live there and uh, at that time there was a big monastery and the rules the rules of the monastery were simple but also they were strict everybody who was working uh, for their for their food Every, uh, other people were 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 working in the fields other people were uh, making um uh, making uh food or other people uh, had uh, had something to do with the fields 
uh, other people were making uh, wooden things, other people were making other, other jobs so that uh, they would have money to uh, govern the monastery. Even their clothes were made by themselves and uh, uh, they were uh, wearing the, the animal's skin in the winter and uh, some lighter clothes in the summer. The first of the monks was working with them just like he was just a simple monk and he was teaching them to be humble and everybody who's uh, living there with, fa uh, with fast fasting, uh, didn't mean anything that means uh, fasting, uh, didn't sleep uh, a lot so that they could pray in the, uh, in the night, and uh, everybody was uh, living under, under, under the eyes of the Lord. Whatever uh, things um, were more than they needed, they were giving uh, them away to the poor people. That was the most uh, the most beautiful thing that the monks were doing, giving people what they needed, giving them food when they were uh, they didn't have anything to eat. It is said that in 1776 that uh, there was hunger in that place. The first of the monk opened opened the storeroom of uh, of the monastery and gave uh, gave uh, wheat. To the people who were hungry, and uh, those people that was giving him uh, them uh, wheat so that they would eat, were more than one hundred uh, one thousand people a day. Now we came to the, to um, to the side that Prochorus was about to become a monk. Prochorus was nineteen years old when he took the decision to go to the monastery. He was in peace, he was joyful, and he was uh, uh, he was walking a lot so that he would have big strength, and he was walking into the woods that nobody was walking there. He came to the monastery at the end of November 1779. The monks welcomed him uh, willingly, but they were very, very, um, very uh, surprised to see that he had a very, a very big love for uh, uh, for God, and that his uh, face was shiny. He was young. He was big, very tall, and very, uh, very uh, big person. A very big person. His uh, hair was long and blonde and were falling, falling on his shoulders and in his blue eyes everybody could see that he had a very pure, pure soul. The first of the monks was from Kursk and knew his parents and knew uh, Prochor's parents. He was very, very glad when he saw him and learned that he wanted to become a monk. So he allowed, allowed him to stay as, um, as a pilgrim in his, uh, in his monastery to see if he really wanted to check out if he really wanted to become a monk or not. Everybody admired uh, his zeal, his um, love for God and his humiliation. He made the most uh, hard works in the monastery and N uh, never stopped praying. All day long he was praying. For all the strictness, strict, uh, strictness that um, he had uh, for him in his soul, he himself from, for his soul, his, in his uh, companions with other people, he was also joyful and open-hearted. He uh, started as uh, caring for the the church. He was always always reading the gospel and most of the time he was into the church. He never said any bad words to anybody. He was always lenient to everybody but never to, his, uh, him, to himself. He was very strict to himself.
he had so many exercises on himself that some of the day, some on one of, the, of those days, he went sick. His body was uh, swollen. He couldn't get up from the bed, and he had great pain. The Lord uh, made him suffer like this for three years, but he was enduring, and he didn't say any bad word a word about it. One of the days, he had Holy Communion. He saw Mother Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles. Peter and John coming uh, to him, coming to him. Theotokos went near him and touched him by her hand, and went and when then she went to uh, the apostles and said, "This person is ours." Suddenly, everything uh, got lost. Everything was lost, and Prochorus began to feel very well. He got up from the bed and asked. The Holy Father, the first of the monks, took yet some days uh, leave. He wanted to, to go to the, to the village and gather money to make a small church near his cell, and he wanted to give that to uh, the mother, the mother of God. He wanted to divine that to give that to the mother of God, who made him well again. Reaching the village, he found his brother, who had inherited the family fortune uh, and after his mother's death. Uh, and truly, this person, this, his brother, gave him enough money so that Prochorus uh, was, uh, uh, was able to fix the church and he was helping the, the, wo the workmen by himself too. He also made a small house for the people near the church. In 1766, uh, 60, uh, in, in 1786, he was made a monk and took and took the name of Sarov. Uh, he took the name of Seraphim, in the name of the angel of the first uh, uh, row, uh, of the first uh, class. Uh, while in the same year he was made a deacon. A deacon. After seven years, he became a monk. Uh, he became a priest in uh, at, at uh, during the liturgy of uh, uh, Holy uh, Holy Thursday, he was uh, uh, also in the liturgy. He saw inside uh, the holy temple, uh, the holy um, the holy um, room. He saw uh, Christ Himself with His arch archangels. So he took. Uh, the decision to go into the forest and uh, stay there and uh, exercise himself. He asked the permission from the first of the monks, so and he set off for his journey. He built his cabin from uh, uh, from uh, from the trunks of the trees there, and he was living there. Uh, isolated with uh, prayers. The gospel was always with him so that he would feel uh, uh, near the places that uh, uh, he said that uh, reading that gospel he made him feel near the places where the, the Lord was living and he gave uh, names from Palestine to the rocks around him. So he was um, bowing and uh, praying to the Christ in the cave that he was uh, calling at Bethlehem. He was reading um, the um, the hellos to the whole, to the Mother of God in Nazareth, uh, in a big in, in uh, a hill in Golgotha that he called him Golgotha. He was reading uh, the speech. Uh, that the, the Lord made on uh, the mountain, and a lot more. In the Sundays and the, the festivals, he went back to the monastery and, and took uh, Holy Communion. After that, he was leaving for his uh, um, cabin, taking only, only, only 
uh, had a bread with him. He was feeding himself with these and fed all the other little animals that came from the forest that were, that were came to him. All these animals uh, made company to him and he was living with them in the cold winter nights that the wind was very fierce. He had a very big fear and he was uh, fighting with the demons, with the demons of the of the um, of that desert, so that he would endure. He was on a hill, and he was climbing a hill, and through uh, his soul, he was praying to God, "Please, my please, Lord Jesus, uh, forgive my sins." Then he. Uh, made the exercise of 1,000 nights of praying. On a big rock, he was praying continuously for 1,000 nights. Three whole years it were, were needed so that he would give peace to his soul from, from the demon. For in, all this, uh, um, in, those, this, in all these years, during these years, uh, never went to the monastery and he was feeding himself with the weeds that were uh, on, the, uh, on the forest. In the monastery everybody were very worried about the saying so that the first of the, of the monks called him to come home, to come to the monastery. He, were, he was in the forest for 16 years. The old man of the monastery, uh, the old man, Saraf, uh, Seraphim of the Saraf, went back to the monastery and he bowed to uh, the first of the monks and his brothers, the monks, and he uh, closed himself in the cell. He stayed there for five years for, uh, under the will of the mother of God, Theodok, as he, as he said. The only companion to him was his, his, her own holy icon. Since in her face he found the true spiritual peacefulness, and as he was saying uh, continuously, Mother of God is the joy, the biggest joy of all the other joys. Now he became, uh, uh, we will read how he became the starrets. In the monastery, uh, there were a lot of people that were coming there from the surrounding villages. When they learned that the saint opened his door, all the pilgrims uh, became more and more every day. Everybody wanted to uh, take the blessings from the holy man, calling him and feeling him that he was spiritually spiritually their uh, teacher and as they say in Russia uh, he's their starret. His holy, holy work as starret was very divine. Thousands of souls found peace, joy and salvation near him with his gift of seeing the future knew what everybody had in his heart without even saying to him what was happening. He was reading their hearts. He gave them, he gave them spiritual advice. He gave them oil and put annoyed them with oil on their uh, head. And that oil was coming from the candle, candle that he had from Panagiev, his, his, his icon of uh, Mother of God. And that uh, that candle was always on, never was was never put off, day and night, and everybody felt that that was uh, that was that was touching all those people was the divine uh, the divine candle of his soul. Everybody who couldn't reach near him wrote him letters, and the saint knew that. Uh, 
uh, what was in to the letters without even opening the letters. He gave joy, he gave peace and divine blessings to everybody. One day, there was a, a very sick uh, lad, boy, to him, and they took a very sick boy to him, called Michael. He had tremendous pain in his feet, and he was standing upright very, very difficult, with very difficulty. As he saw uh, the starrets, he fell on his knees and, pl and played him said, please make him well again. The saint uh, looked at him very carefully and asked him, Do you believe in God? Yes, I do, the lad said. Then the holy person took off his boots and anointed his feet with oil from the candle of Panagia of Mother of God. And he said, In the name of the Father, of the Son of the Holy on the Holy Ghost walk. Then, then the sick person went up and walked without pains, and he couldn't even find words to say thank you to the holy person. Stand, he didn't, and of course didn't accept his thanks, and told him, "Only God made he made you well, my son, and only God." Uh, can make miracles and heal people. You should have thank him, not me. Michael uh, wanted to show his gratitude to uh, the old man and gave up all his belongings in the poor people and gave enough of uh, the money in the monastery of the De Veyevo. After that, the saint, the, uh, the saint made a lot of other people well again. He became uh, all those miserable people. He became the father of those miserable people. And he gave them joy and help. And uh, always saying things that would happen in the future, as the old prophets do for the, the Hebrews. Russia, at, at that period, was uh, had a lot of political and religious, uh, um, religious problems. The old man was always saying, "You went away from the Lord of, from the uh, uh, the way of our Lord, and His wrath will soon fall on us. The crosses will go off the church. Everybody will take the crosses off the churches, and the monasteries will be uh, thrown to pieces. There will be such pain that even the angels wouldn't have time to gather souls." His face was then uh, uh, was full of sorrow and his only uh, salvation and his only comfort was praying. He loved, uh, especially loved the children and called them my little treasures and was always glad to play with them and be with them uh, all day long. All Russia thought that uh, he, uh, he was her protector uh, and from uh, the big places from the palaces to the more the most uh, poor people. He had also said uh, a lot of uh, uh, when a lot of things bad things would happen to Russia, or he was also said uh, when pe when wars would come to Russia, and he was always right. Thousands of people came uh, as pilgrims to the monastery with cars. With uh, with um, uh, other piece of other means of transportation, even through uh, we even on foot through uh, through the snow, just to hear one word from that person. Uh, in the dawn, when the the bells were you know, were uh, uh, were calling the people for uh, the the, um, the church, the doors of the monastery opened. And a lot, a lot of people were were, uh, were coming into the church. Then the saint came out of his cell. He was wearing he was wearing a, a, a white a white gown, and his face was uh, was full full of 
of, of signing divine lights. He was blessing them. He was making them well again. And he was advising them. Uh, even soldiers were, uh, came by to, came, to take his blessings. And in the streets, when they went into the, to the different places uh, that uh, they were sending them, and the, they first came to the saint so that he, they would care, uh, take his blessings. When the, Lord, uh, when the old man came from the forest, the nuns of the nearby monastery of Vegevo asked him to take them uh, under his guidance and protection. The saint, uh, with um, the help of Mother Mary, the Mother of God, he organized the monastery. He gave them a new rule. Uh, gave them new rules of um, of, uh, uh, of governing the the monastery, and he was advising the monks according to uh, Mother of God's uh, um, showings and directions. Near the monastery, there were also uh, some uh, iron iron places that iron. Um, uh, Iron, um, iron caves where they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, one iron, uh, they, they took iron from them. Those people, uh, those, uh, those places also had a lot of uh, bad people, thieves, drunks, and people who were killing each other with the knife and who had made this, uh, this place as a hell. With a lot of uh, effort and divine uh, grace in his uh, advices and his speeches and his prayings, um, and his prayings, th this place became uh, a, a just. He became a peaceful place. The church of the monastery was the um, uh, the church of uh, uh, of the Christ um, uh, alteration. When, uh, when they asked the old man how he made this, uh, this place come um, in peace, he said, not me, not me, the, uh, the, the, the Son of God, he made this alteration to the place. Uh, the sister of Michael beca became a, ma uh, a nun there, and, uh, and that was, uh, the, Michael was the person that uh, the saint made, made well again. Her name was Helen. He had a small, uh, a small slave with her, and um, she, loved, uh, she loved Helen a lot and helped her where she needed help, and she followed her in the monastery. That little child became sick from uh, tuberculosis, and even uh, all the prayers that uh, Nun Helen did. The little child, the little uh, girl, died. Michael was uh, was always running the the monastery. Was in a trip. Uh, was away in a trip. When Helen learned uh, that he was uh, also sick, from her, she was very very sad, and she felt that uh, she was about to die too. She was very upset and called. The old man Seraphim and said that she fears death. The saint told her, Why do they fear death, my joy, my child? For us, death is a divine joy because we will go, we will go to our Lord Jesus Christ. He, uh, he took her to herself and she put some holy water on her and let her. She um, took the Holy Communion. She said goodbye to the other nuns, went to um, ask for their forgiveness. She laid on her bed and went to sleep. She died. The nuns went crying to uh, say that to the old man. He saw, uh, he look, looking at them and said, why do you, you weep? My silly child, my silly children, don't you understand? You didn't see her soul flying like a dove in the sky. 
and Seraphim, uh, with all his love and his respect that um, they, uh, all the people had to him, he had a lot of bad people in his life that uh, said, uh, said that they were saying bad things about him because they hated him and accusing him, uh, accusing him when he didn't see. He endured everything, believing that. Uh, to be a true Christian, you have to uh, cross to take that uh, martyr martyrdom too. Uh, the martyrdom of bad people saying things for you that they aren't they, that they aren't true. He was accepting uh, patiently uh, the, all the bad things that coming to him, even in from inside the monastery of Saraf which he had devoted himself and even from the monastery of Dvegevo, which he um, had so many good things to them. In, uh, through his, uh, through his uh, special, special love that he had for Panagia, the mother of God, we, say, we, had, uh, we have also said a lot of other things. And Theotokos, uh, uh, always visited him and gave him in uh, visions and gave him a lot of uh, advices. In his last vision, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, that nun Efpraxia uh, has uh, said to us from the monastery Efpraxia from the monastery of Dvegevo, uh, and she had the honor to. Um, follow that um, that vision with him. She says, In the morning of the 25th of March, 1839, I was in the room of the old man and I was praying with him in the knees. Suddenly, we had a big noise, we had a big noise and a very beautiful scent that was filling, filling the whole room. The, the, the door opened and into the room we, uh, we, we saw a big light shining inside it and a beautiful, beautiful smell inside the room. The saint was praying uh, in his knees and he got up, sees me that I was trembling and says, and said, do not fear, my child. This is the mother of God. Nayia is coming to us. Truly, two angels came there, and they are holding branches with them. And behind them, John the, pro the pro uh, John uh, the Baptist and John the, uh, the Theologos. Then came Theotokos, the mother of God, God with. 12, 12, virgin, uh, 12 virgin martyrs. She uh, was wo wearing a, ver a, um, a red cloth and she had in her hair, in her hair a very shining um, crown. She came near and she honored me, saying to me, Do not fear, sister. We came here to visit you. These these uh, girls that are accompanying me are virgins like you. The saint uh, stood in front of, the, of Panagia and was talking to her just like he was talking to another person. Through my, uh, through my, um, my fear, my trembliness, I couldn't hear what they were saying. In one moment, I... I understood and I heard the voice of the Theotokos telling him, Do not abandon my virgin nuns of the Vegevo. The saint told her, My lady, I gather them, but I cannot lead them, I cannot guide them by myself. Mother of God said, I will be near you and I will be helping you. I want you to teach them to be obedient, and I want them 
to hold the obedience and be near you and near me differently they will not enjoy my the position between these versions which are with with me whoever uh, help them for the love of god he will be messed by him asked by him and whoever insults those uh, nuns he will be punished by me after that a mother of god was uh, 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 turned her face to me and told me do you see these virgins which which have um, which have uh, this honor to be with me everybody choose through their own will to be poor and loved only jesus christ they gave up their their wealth and their kingdoms for the holy and divine kingdom of our of my lord jesus christ and they uh, uh, were honored by glory and uh, by glory and honor they gave up their life they they martyred they martyred them uh, so that they would suffer as the, the the nuns here and secretly through the sorrow of their heart but their pain will not be the same after that she turned to the saint she blesses she blessed him and she, she said to him that very soon he would be with her with her in the, the divine kingdom the uh, the saint uh, sent, um, uh, greeted her and the other saints and suddenly everything got lost and the vision just disappeared that was the last vision of the Tokos, mother of god that the saint sarf uh, was honored to see that was the 12th uh, vision as they say the saint is now 73 years old he was continuously saying my body is as dead now but my soul is just like it will it is born right now he was he was also saying for the year of his um um uh, making of his that the people would make him a god they say that in the summer they will celebrate uh, easter now i will tell you about the sleeping of saint the day that he would he died slowly after slow slowly slowly he began to be prepared to uh, give up this world he called the person of uh, the um, the priest of the monastery of divejevo and uh, he uh, that uh, he was um, he was taking uh, holy communion and he was also uh, having prayers with him having prayers with him father vasilius and gave him uh, pieces of his clothes of his uh, uh, gown and he also gave him the um, the governing of the monastery he gave uh, he gave advice that he uh, wanted and directions that he wanted for his own burial he asked to put him in the in a coffin that he had made by himself uh, digging a tree uh, when he was in the forest and he um, put a sign so that they would un- understand what it was a very big stone that he wanted there to be buried near the ch- the the, uh, the church of uh, 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 of father mary's of the mother of god of mother mary's the mother of god he also wanted to put in his chest the icon of saint sergius that panagia panagia was coming to him also it was 1833 the first of the year the day was sunday he went to the chapel he put the pilgrims in all the icons he took holy communion 
and said goodbye to all the fathers and the monks. In the night, Father, Father Paul was uh, living in the, uh, the cell near him, then I uh, heard him uh, singing, chanting uh, um, hymns through all the night. At, this, at, uh, at about six o'clock in the morning, he went, Father Paul went to the church uh, for the Holy Liturgy, smelled, um, smelled uh, smoke, and, and saw that coming through the door of the saint. He uh, went, went to the, the door, uh, knocked on the door, and he didn't take any answer from the old man inside, and called the other monks. They opened. They all opened the door, thinking that uh, old uh, the old seraphim had gone, forgetting the, the candles uh, lit. It was dark, and they didn't see him at right away. Leading, little little garden saw him kneeling in front of the icon of uh, Mother of God, and his eyes were closed, and his hands were crossed on his chest. In front of him, he had uh, the gospel opened, and its uh, its ends were burned. They took snow from outside, and they put the fire out, believing that the, the old man would, had gone to sleep, and because he didn't sleep all night, and he went to sleep because he was very tired. When they wanted to. Waking her up, they understood but his, that his holy soul had flown through from his body, and um, that was holding uh, he was that was holding inside body, and it had flown through the kingdoms of the heavens, and then they remembered some of the the words of uh, Seraphim of Saraf that his death would be. Um, would be revealed through fire. They put uh, his holy his holy body into uh, the box that he wanted and uh, and uh, carried him to the big church of the monastery. The church was full of pilgrims who came from all the places of Russia. Eight days the holy relics remained there into the church so everybody could pay uh, a homage to, to it. One of the hermits of uh, the forest saw he, uh, in the dawn of the 2nd of January he, the soul of the saint going up the sky with a big, big shining light. Uh, now I'm going to tell you about his, call, his uh, name as, as a saint. In the summer of uh, 1903, 70 years after his death, the church made him a saint. In the 19th of July, 150,000 people with, uh, uh, with uh, the head, the char, were gathered to honor in, uh, the, um, in a, a former, former uh, re re uh, recognition that this person was a saint. It was night, everybody was holding uh, candles and their eyes were full of tears. The holy relics were, uh, had a very beautiful smell and uh, through, um, through a, a box uh, that was made from, uh, uh, um, from a tree in the forest, they had uh, on it a, um, a, a marble, a marble uh, a cup, and in uh, in the the four uh, corners they had four seraphim angels. On those days, there a lot, a lot of miracles happened, and this place and this fact was called Easter of Sarf. This summer, that summer, all the problems were forgotten. All the bad things, all the conflict, all, all, the, all uh, the bad things that people were made to one another, and all Russia was united in front of um, the tomb 
of uh, of the poor seraphim of Saraf that was the humble the humble uh, slave of uh, Panagia, the mother of God. If, uh, as many years as uh, the, they would come by, send Seraphim of Saraf, this the truly, truly beloved saint who was always, always happy as a child will, al will always remain full of life in the heart of the people. Now, I will tell you about the holy relics that were found that we were found years after. Uh, in 1920, the monastery of Sarov uh, closed down, and uh, the commissarius took the holy relics of Saint Seraphim and gave them to uh, a museum that was not religious, uh, the Museum of uh, Art of Art in Moscow. Uh, in the monastery Donko Donskoy. In 1930, the museum closed down and the relics were given to the central museum, which was not uh, uh, religious, the Museum of Moscow, and that closed down in uh, 1946. There, uh, the, 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 rel the, uh, the, the relics are lost, until November 1990, some of the, the people that were working in the Museum of Religious and uh, uh, Non-Religion of Petropolis, uh, that was in the cathedral of the cathedral of Panagia of Kazan, they discovered um, a, a piece, a, a, a box that was uh, closed with uh, a piece of cloth. Taking the piece of cloth off, they see a wooden base, and on it they say uh, that it was uh, it was wrapped up with uh, uh, clothing, a holy relic. the The head, uh, in the head, the the the, um, the hair and the be the beard, and uh, in the hands he had gloves, and in the feet he had boots. In his chest, there was a big bronze uh, cross, and uh, there was no other bone left. N uh, no uh, bone was left. Everybody was every every bone was there, and uh, a piece of the rib and his um, and his um, holy uh, holy uh, stone holy um, holy bone was broken. Uh, the clerk who was working there, Sergius Nikolaevich Pavlov, who was there, said that um, he took the two white gloves from the hands. It was uh, uh, in the hands written something in gold, uh, in, in, gold uh, uh, in gold. One of them said, Saint Father Seraphim, and the other said, uh, Pray to the Lord for us. Reading the name Seraphim, they understood who was it. The, the, uh, the, the, the very curious thing was that in the museum there was no other relic, there was no other read, read, uh, written thing, there was no other written thing uh, about the relics. In the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the night of the same day, in the uh, snowing places of uh, uh, Pet uh, Saint of Petropolis, uh, the, where there is the river Nevas, it was a very big uh, lightning uh, there, and the whole place was um, filled with light. The the people were very scared and ran ran to the windows, waiting to see uh, that it was a catastrophe. They didn't see anything. The most peculiar thing was that this. Um, this very strange phenomenon was a sign that Saint Seraphim uh, chose to uh, say that they truly found his uh, holy relics in the old, uh, old capital of uh, the empire. So, in the 11th of January 1991, the Cathedral of Panagia of Mother of God was prepared to uh, accept 
the holy relics officially. Theoretically, the, the, the temple was still a museum, so that in, this, in, um, uh, in that place, in the first, in the first, first uh, uh, place of uh, the room, there was a big cloth to hide uh, the, um, the exhibition behind it, who was not religious. The lights of the museum uh, went down, and uh, only uh, the central, the central, central layer of the of the temple was lit. In the central, just be, below the, the central layer, there was a big, a big wooden place, and it was uh, covered with uh, uh, with a cloth. In front of it, it was patriarch, the patriarch of Moscow and all the Russian, the Alexius II, who came specially to take the relics of the saint. Uh, it uh, uh, looks like that the, the church opened again for a very small time for, uh, for the gods, for the gods worshipping. Seventy years after uh, had gone by uh, when the uh, the holy relics of Saint Seraphim uh, were that were in um, as we say in prison of non religion person, seventy years had gone by after his slept his sleeping eighteen thirty three uh, uh, till his uh, till his re renouncing his renouncing as a saint nineteen o three and the first uh, and the first cutting of his holy relics at last on a golden plate the holy relics were carried on the on the soldiers of uh, arch priests and into the dark storerooms of the museum in the center of the of the temple patriarch alexius uh, looks at them without speaking then uh, with a lot of fear and a lot of love, he comes closer, close. He pays homage, and he um, he sees uh, the the head of the saint on his uh, forehead. On his forehead. At that time, that uh, they were chanting uh, his uh, uh, holy holy um, holy words. In front of a uh, box, an unbelievable joy and spiritual uh, um, joy had gone through the whole people who were nearby and were watching, and they were crying out of sorrow, out of pain, and all mm, uh, all the they had uh, um, said goodbye in 1920 to the holy relics. And with uh, um, tears of joy now, they were uh, accepting it, they were welcoming it, just like us, they were, were uh, celebrating a winter Easter. Just if the, 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 the saint himself was, in, was inside them, between them, alive, uh, saying uh, one, uh, to, one to the other, with his greetings, the holy greetings, as he was always saying, uh, God resurrected my child, God resurrected my joy. Jesus Christos vos cras, vicena vos pras.